Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 33 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we want to be your go-to source for all things health and nutrition. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase Yongevity products, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Ask about joining the Brightside Ben team, 866-735-2470 is the phone number to call. You can also click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to check out our True Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, silicon oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our True Skin Health products, all, formu all formulated in my compounding pharmacy for wound healing. It turns out when you heal wounds, you beautify the skin as well. All our products are made with super high concentrations of active ingredients. You can find them all at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And don't forget to take a look at our Truth Nutritional supplements at truthnourishment.com, truthnourishment.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. We're talking about the power of estrogen, the power of the female or the supposed female hormone estrogen. It's not just a female hormone. It's true that women make more estrogen than men, but it's uh, most certainly not a a female-only hormone. Men make estrogen, and estrogen is involved in a lot more than just reproduction. Estrogen is actually a growth substance, a stress management substance, and it's associated with all kinds of health challenges. We talked to Jennifer Coy yesterday about endometriosis, which is a hideous, absolutely hideous health challenge that women confront, mostly involved with, uh, with uh, it, largely involved, we'll say, with estrogen and estrogen metabolism. Uh, and it is a, uh, there's a, a very important link between the digestive system and fat metabolism. That's probably the most important place that you can work if you're dealing with an estrogenic issue. And I'm talking estrogenic cancers, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, prostate cancer, which has an estrogen component uh, in men. Um, also in uh, things like fibromyalgia and endometriosis. And, and really all of these health challenges that, uh, that have estrogen at their core can just be called estrogen disease. When we name things endometriosis and fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, and these are all um, health challenges that confront the estrogenic body type and, and women, we kind of do a disservice to trying to understanding to our goal of understanding the disease process. Think estrogen. Think estrogen metabolism. Now when I say think estrogen and estrogen metabolism, if you're dealing with endometriosis, which is, as our guest yesterday, Jennifer, was saying, is a kind of stickiness that occurs throughout the body. Nobody really, peep, nobody really tells us what endometriosis is, yet it is a health challenge that affects probably, I don't know, maybe 10, maybe 10 percent, maybe five, somewhere around five to 10 percent of, uh, of women deal with this hideous health disease or health challenge. 
endometriosis. It's, endometriosis is when the endometrial lining, which is composed largely of connective tissue, forms everywhere in the body. And it kind of sticks the body together. It connects the body together. We end up with adhesions and scars. It can cause metabolic issues, problems with the digestive system. It can cause serious pain problems. It's linked to fibromyalgia, very similar to fibromyalgia, which is also an estrogen issue. These horrible diseases are so easy to address. Yet, if you go to the doctor with this miserable condition, endometriosis, you'll probably go to a gynecologist or perhaps a, a hormone specialist. Um, they're going to take out. They're going to want to take out your your female reproductive system, or they're going to want to drug you because they don't really know what to do. Think about it. Ten percent of women in their reproductive years are dealing with this health challenge. It's absolutely awful, awful health challenge. By the way. Almost 50% of women who are infertile have some kind of uh, endometrio endometriosis issue. So it's a serious problem. Aside from the pain and, um, and the just debilitating condition, the, the, the debilitating nature of the condition, infertility, headaches, depression are all linked to this horrible health challenge. Yet, we know because of the estrogen component, Working on your food and working on your digestive system can be hugely effective. Anybody who's dealing with endometriosis should immediately, immediately go on a one or two or three day fast and start doing a food diary, keeping track of their problem foods. And I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of them. Constipation and endometriosis go hand in hand. Constipation is largely a food issue. So you got to go on a fast for two or three days. You come back from your fast, you start charting your foods. If you don't think you could go on a fast for two or three days, do celery juice. By the way, for people who can't fast, celery juice is an awesome way to, to help you get into the fasting process. Celery juice provides you, and when I say celery juice, I mean with the fiber, where you drop celery into water, uh, into a Vitamix, add some water, and salt, and salt goes great with celery, and you uh, blend it up. It's a very benign way to introduce energy into the body if you're going through a fast. Fasting completely is, is the best thing to do, a water fast. But if you can't do that, throw a piece of celery into a Vitamix with some water and a little bit of salt and sip on that. It'll give you energy from the electrolytes in a non-caloric fashion and it won't burden the digestive system so you still get your digestive break. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking to give the digestive system a break. So one or two, even three days, you fast, you start eating foods again, you start with your favorite foods, and you keep track of them in a food diary. And you're going to be shocked at what you find out. If you're dealing with endometriosis or fibromyalgia or autoimmune disease, and they're all basically the same thing. Endometriosis and fibromyalgia and autoimmunity all involve the hormone system going awry, the female hormone system going awry. Psoriasis, you can throw that one into the mix too, as an autoimmune disease. Anyway, digestive system, work on fats, Primarily, use essential fatty acids. Omega-6 essential fatty acids and omega-3 essential fatty acids both act like estrogen, especially the omega-6s. They both have estrogen balancing effects. They both can support the estrogen, estrogenic system, and they're both important, too. Sometimes you'll hear nutritionists say, eh, you don't need those omega-6s. Those omega-6s, we get too many omega-6s. I hear this all the time, and it's not true. You need omega-6s omega-6 essential fatty acids. You need omega-3 essential fatty acids. If you're dealing with fibromyalgia, or I'm uh, sorry, endometriosis or fibromyalgia, get on the ultimate EFAs. So anyway, you fast for a couple of days, and then you start introducing foods, keeping track of the foods that you're eating. This is really a go-to nutrition, uh, a go-to healing strategy for all health challenges, but especially if you're dealing with, with female health issues because of the very intimate connection between the female, reproduct the female hormone reproductive system and the digestive system. You write everything down. You're going to be shocked at what you find out. You start eliminating foods. You may not find that there's not a lot of foods you could eat. Fine. That's okay. Eventually, you can start adding more foods in. But to start, you want to, you're going to want to eliminate all your problem foods. You may, get, may just be doing celery and cucumber for a little bit. That's fine. It'll give your digestive system a break. It'll help you balance your hormones while you're supplementing. When you were supplementing, you supplement with fats and fatty, uh, with essential fatty acids and fatty vitamins. Your ultimate EFAs, vitamin E and A are spectacular, particularly vitamin A, as is vitamin D, for all female reproductive hormone issues. And again, men have make estrogen also. Vitamins A, vitamins E, vitamins D. 
There's a couple others. There's a couple minerals that are very important as well. All right, hang tight. We'll take a break. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. Sign. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. And we got lines open for you if you have questions about estrogen, estrogen health challenges, anything we're speaking about here today, a common or success story you'd like to share. If you have questions about the longevity products or true skin health products, ingredients, formulations, we love hearing from you. If you just have a common or success story, we love hearing from you. On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase longevity products, go to brightsideben.com. PharmacistBen.com or CriticalHealthNews.com. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well. BrightsideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com or CriticalHealthNews.com. And take a look at our Truth Skin Health products at TruthTreatments.com and our nutritional supplements at TruthNourishment.com. So, estrogen, so misunderstood. If, you, if you've been listening to this program, you are hip to the power of estrogen for, for better or worse. Most people are not. Most doctors are not. Most specialists in autoimmune disease don't understand the connection between estrogen, estrogen processing at the level of the digestive system, and the symptoms of autoimmunity, the symptoms of fibromyalgia, the symptoms of endometriosis, the symptoms of infertility, the symptoms of hypothyroidism, the symptoms of depression. See where I'm going here. Understanding how to power, how to, how to leverage the power of estrogen and to help the body process estrogen is job number one. If you're dealing with any of these inflammatory conditions, I was talking about psoriasis before we went to the break. How many people know that there's a major relationship between psoriasis and excessive amounts of estrogen, excessive production of estrogen? So there's lots of ways you can help the body process estrogen, fasting and then doing a food diary and eliminating problem foods, that's important. Using digestive enzymes that help you process fats because of the relationship between the fatty system and estrogen metabolism, lipase in particular, bile salts, lecithin granules, stomach bitters, and probiotics. Don't forget those. Probiotics play a major role in estrogen metabolism and there's very important crosstalk between bacteria that live in the gut and the liver and the production of bile and the intestine. Crosstalk is a really cool biochemical word that means that these, all these parts communicate with each other. They signal to each other. The bacteria in your gut are talking to your intestine. The bacteria in your, intest- in your gut, and gut means intestine, are talking to the cells of the intestine. Bacterial cells are talking to intestinal cells are talking to liver cells. They're all talking to each other, communicating, cross-talking to each other, signaling to each other. The, the little bacteria are telling the intestinal cells what's going on. The intestinal cells and the bacterial cells are telling the liver what's going on. And the liver is the key, is the key estrogen metabolizing structure. So working on the liver. Fucoidin, which you'll find in the uh, Fucoid Z. I haven't talked about that one for a while. And the Z radical from longevity also play a, plays a very important role in the processing of fats and the processing of estrogen and gut health. And then there's these really cool minerals, such as zinc and selenium. Selenium is a superstar. Anybody, anybody dealing with endometriosis or fibromyalgia or any estrogenic health challenge should be using the ultimate selenium, 600 micrograms a day or so. MSM, I absolutely love MSM. Sulfur is one of the ways the body clears out excess estrogen, sulfuration. The body, the liver in particular, uses sulfur as a detoxifying element, a detoxifying substance. MSM is, is um, non-toxic nutritional sulfur, methyl sulfonyl methane. Awesome, awesome stuff. A must-have nutritional supplement. I take three grams of it a day. Sulfur is ridiculously important, but as far as estrogen goes, it's a key player in estrogen detoxification. If you're dealing with any estrogenic health issues, you see all the power you have here between eliminating problem foods, working on the, on the digestive system, working on fat metabolism, making sure you're using your fatty vitamins, vitamins A, E, and D. I didn't say D, but that's very important also. Oh, where do you get D? From the sun. So getting out in the sun is important. Say, I have lupus. I have scleroderma. They told me to stay out of the sun because they don't know what they're talking about. You don't want to burn. 
But you do need some sun for vitamin D. It's the best place to get your sun. Your essential fatty acids, both omega-6s and omega-3s are very important. MSM, zinc, selenium. We have all of, all of these options. A probiotic supplement, a really good probiotic supplement. We have all of these wonderful, wonderful strategies for dealing with estrogenic health challenges. Fasting, calorie restriction, that's another good one. Every time we eat, the inflammatory response is sparked up. Every time we eat lettuce or broccoli or so-called good foods, organic. I only, eat, I only eat organic. It doesn't matter. Your organic foods can, make you, or can be pro-inflammatory. But I'm gluten-free. It doesn't matter. There's a hundred things, different elements that are found in uh, different molecules that are found in plants that you could be reacting to. But I don't eat any gluten, and I only eat the 10 good foods. I don't eat the 10 bad foods. It doesn't matter. If you're symptomatic, where there's smoke, there's fire. If you're symptomatic in any way, focus on digestive health, whether you're gluten-free or you're only eating the 10 good foods, whatever. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And the idea, the, the idea here is that we have so much control over our bodies, and we're not leveraging it. I love that word, leverage. Leverage is when a little move gives you a big result. The lever was one of the, sometimes people say the wheel is the greatest invention, maybe it was, but a case could be made for the lever. The lever allows you to get a big response from a little move. Leverage is when you get a big effect from a tiny little cause. If you're leveraging your money, a small amount of money gives you a big, a, a big return. If you're leveraging your biochemistry, a small biochemical move gives you a big effect, like fasting. That's a great way to leverage your biochemistry. And everything we talk about here is about leveraging your biochemistry. As far as uh, we're talking about MSM, another great place where sulfur plays a role in detoxification is in the element glut or in the molecule glutathione. Glutathione is a superstar, superstar bio mo uh, biochemical molecule or biomolecule. And the cool thing about glutathione is you can build it, you can support your body's building it, or you can even have it injected into your blood IV. I, we were talking to Afton Bryant last week, a nurse here in, De uh, in Denver who has a, a really cool business where she gives people IVs, nutritional IVs. And I'm telling you, I've been talking about nutritional IVs, nutritional intravenous therapy now for uh, years, years. When I, start, when I start working in the hospitals, and I saw that they were putting electrolytes into people's, uh, into, right into people's blood when they were sick, potassium and calcium and magnesium. And I started doing some research. I started researching IV vitamin C. I was like, we got to be telling everybody about intravenous nutrition. That's the kind of health care we need, not Bernie Sanders health care where everybody gets free drugs, where everybody gets Medicare. We need the kind of health care where we all get IV nutrition, IV nutrition health care. That, now, that's the kind of health care system I can get behind. That's the kind of health care system. I could pay taxes for. Imagine this. Everybody gets IV vitamin C and IV glutathione and IV selenium and IV B complex and IV electrolytes as much as they need. It would be a hundred times cheaper, a thousand times cheaper than prescription drugs, 10,000 times cheaper than prescription drugs, and we would all be way better off for it. We'd all be happier. We'd cut the crime rate because a lot of crime is caused by dysfunctional brains and, and fetal alcohol syndrome and, and, and fetuses that are in the womb that are deprived of nutrients. We change our entire society and our entire world with intravenous nutrition. And intravenous glutathione, folks, intravenous glutathione is amazing for any kind of health challenge, including cancer. A lot of that, a lot of that has to do with sulfur, but glutathione is just amazingly important. Glutathione. G-L-U-T-A-T-H-I-O-N-E. Whenever you hear thio, by the way, that means sulfur. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back on the Bright Side right after this. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, and uh, we got lines open for you. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7, on the archive page at brightsideben.com. You can purchase Longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And make sure you take a look at our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and Truth Nutritional Supplements at truthnourishment.com. 
I am going to have a lot more to say in the coming days about the importance of estrogen and estrogen metabolism. Hopefully you guys won't get sick of it. But there's a lot of things you can tie into this whole idea of estrogen. We can talk about MSM. We can talk about selenium. We can talk about zinc. We can talk about probiotics. We can talk about the various diseases. We can talk about fluoride. There's an important relationship between fluoride and estrogen. You know, sometimes people tell me, They'll say, Ben, you're going to live to be 100 until uh, you're 120 because you're, you supplement and you know how the body works. And in my head, I'm thinking, you know, I wish that were true. But I'm still breathing the air everybody's breathing, and I'm still drinking the water everybody's drinking, and I'm still eating the food everybody's, uh, everybody's eating. The, our environment is so corrupted and so polluted and so trashed. I was just watching something about fracking yesterday. Oh, my God. The, the areas around the fracking factories or whatever they call the fracking fracking plants where they do the fracking which is squeezing every last drop of oil out of the out of the earth are so polluted and so trashed people are gagging and getting sick in the area they they burn the natural they have to do some kind of process where they burn the natural gas first i, I don't know all the details of it but the fact the point is is we've trashed our environment so badly who why are we putting fluoride in the water when we all know as chemists anyway all chemists know fluoride is a major toxic element. It's the most powerful element, uh, arguably the most powerful and reactive element on the periodic table, and we're putting it in the water? I don't care if it helps your cavities, and I don't even know if it does that. You can't put it in the most reactive element on the periodic table in concentrated amounts. By concentrated, I mean more than food amounts in the water supply? Oh my god. So anyway, we'll be talking about all of these ideas. In the coming days, I have a post up on Facebook. Do you know the difference between retinoic acid and retinol? Got some attention here. Retinoic acid is vitamin A. Retinol is vitamin A. Do you know the difference between the two? Well, if you're in skin, if you're a, a skincare aficionado, I know a lot of you guys are are used to our truth treatments, or, or or at least are hip to skincare and skincare ingredients. You know about the importance of retinol. Most people these days know about the importance of retinol. Retinol is an absolutely vital anti-aging topical. What makes retinol so unbelievably important is, yes, vitamin A, everybody knows vitamin A is good to take. You need to take it. It's a building substance when you take it inside. But what really makes retinol so fascinating to me as a skincare chemist is the fact that you can put retinol on top of your skin and get skin cell benefits by putting something on top of your skin. This is very rare in the world of skincare. Certainly nothing with the, there's no ingredients with the power of retinol with a slight possible arguable exception of vitamin C in a fatty form. There's no more important substance with the exception of perhaps of vitamin C than retinol for anti-aging the skin, for, for uh, not just preventing wrinkles, but reversing them. Once they happen, I get people asking me, is there anything I can do about my wrinkles? Can we reverse them? Yes. Retinol is FDA approved, retinol in its active form, which I'll tell you what that is in a sec, is FDA approved to reverse wrinkles. It's the only topical anti-aging ingredient that's approved by the FDA. Now, retinol is vitamin A. It's true vitamin A. But it's not active, or at least it's not super active. It's got a little activity. But its real active form is retinoic acid. That's the active ingredient in Retin-A. You need a prescription for retinoic acid. But retinol, you don't need a prescription for. You can use topical retinol and get Retin-A benefits. However, retinol is much weaker than retinoic acid. Think about it. Retinol has to be converted. It has to be activated. So it's not so po it's, it's, got a, it's not as potent as the active form. It has to be activated. And in fact, it's about 100 times less potent. So if you're going to use retinol and get Retin-A benefits, <clears throat> excuse me, retinoic acid benefits, Retin-A benefits, these days there's generic forms. We'll just say Retin-A benefits. You need a hundred times. You need to multiply the dose of your Retin-A by a hundred times. So, say you want a 0.01 percent Retin-A or retinoic acid effect. You need a one percent retinol. They're very hard to find. They're there, but they're hard to find. We have them at our truth uh, or at truthtreatments.com. But if you want a five percent retinol, that's n you're not going to find that anywhere. And that's really what you need if you want to jack up the, the collagen-making machinery, the hyaluronic acid-making machinery, the anti-aging machinery of the skin. You need a 5% retinol once a week, once every 10 days. Where are you going to find that? Hmm. I'll give you a clue. Truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, because I want you guys to have the real stuff, the good stuff, the powerful stuff. You deserve it. 
You're intelligent enough to use retinol. Yeah, you may overuse it if you first start using it, but it's not the end of the world. Skincare companies don't want you to have it, so you're not going to find it. If you want 5% retinol, go to truthtreatments.com. Use it with our Truth Omega-6 healing cream. They make a great, great anti-aging pair. Omega-6 healing cream, of course, is loaded with fat-soluble vitamin C. And by the way, our retinol 1% gel and retinol 5% gel both contain 25% vitamin C. You're not going to see that anywhere on planet Earth. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010. Let's go to the phones and talk to our friend Rhea in Japan. Good morning, Rhea. What's going on? Hi, Pharmacist Ben. How are you? I'm doing good. Nice to talk to you this morning. Nice to talk to you, too. It's at night at uh, 12 p.m. PM at uh, night in Japan. As in midnight? <laughs> yes, or noon? as in midnight. Oh, my goodness. Midnight. Well, you're going to talk to us and go go to bed? Yes. Okay. How can I help you? Okay. Um, I have a question about SIBO again. Yes. And, Small intestinal um, bacterial overgrowth. Yes. You have okay. told me to follow a few, uh, um, the low, fad, low FODMAP diet. Yes. And Did you do some research on FODMAPs? Supplements? Yes. And it's okay. been very hard. It's because <laughs> everything, you, the past all your favorite days. foods probably, there's nothing you can eat. Is that what you found? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's terrible, I know. Is, um, a lot of people um, writing about this on the Internet say that you're not supposed to do this for like a long time because they kill off the good bacteria as well. You're not supposed to do what? Low FODMAP? The low FODMAP diet. When, how does low FODMAP more kill more off? Than. Hang on, hang on. How do they say low FODMAP kills the bacteria? I, I'm not sure about that. By starving the bacteria. That's no, I don't think that's. I don't think you have to. Right? I true? don't think you. I don't think you have to worry about that. There's lots of there's lots of fo low FODMAP foods that you could eat that can, that can take care of back that can help you with uh, with your with your uh, your probiotics. You get bacteria. I'm not sure if flax fiber, uh, flax mm -hmm. fiber might be low FODMAPs. That's one of the best ways. And chia fiber. That must, that's, those are both great ways to build up, um, uh, build up bacteria. I'm not sure if they're considered high or low FODMAPs, so you might want to look into that. Had you heard of FODMAPs before? Bef before we talk? Um, no. Okay. Very well, hang tight, Rhea. We've got to take yeah. a break. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little quick, quickie tutorial on FODMAPs when we come back, because it's a really important subject, and you don't really hear a lot about it, but it is very important. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Rhea in... Rhea, have Rhea here? Talking to Rhea in Japan. Yes. Hey, Rhea. Yes. Hi, hi, Rhea. Yes. Um, Hi. Okay, so, yeah, FODMAPs, you don't hear a lot about it, although you're hearing more about it these yes. days, and I'm not surprised that you didn't mm -hmm. know what it was, uh, because a lot of people not don't in know Japan. what it is. Nowhere yeah. in Japan. <laughs> but you've done, you've done some research. You can see it's pretty significant, right? Now you're like, oh, my God, yes, all my foods are FODMAPs. it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult. So here's the deal. FODMAP mm -hmm. stands for a fermentable. That's the key word right there. The F is the key mm -hmm. part of FODMAPs, fermentable, okay. meaning it feeds bacteria. Uh, and the rest is mm -hmm. just sugars. Oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and something called polyols, like sor sorbitol, xylitol, anything that ends with an all, mannitol, erythritol. These are sweeteners uh, that, uh, can have a that, that can ferment inside the gut. So the FODMAPs diet mm -hmm. is a, a diet that controls or at least recognizes that certain foods will ferment in the intestine. Not good. Mm -hmm. Fermenting bacteria in the intestine, causing bacteria to overgrow in the intestine, can cause this condition that we talked about called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It can also cause mm -hmm. um, problems with um, pulling liquid into the, uh, into the gut, into the intestine, causing lots of loose stools and diarrhea and malabsorption issues, cause gas problems, bloating problems. A lot of these issues uh, will, are things that people just deal with on a regular basis because they don't really know what to do because they don't know about the link between these FODMAPs foods. Apples are a high mm -hmm. FODMAP food. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, yeah, if you've got FODMAPs problems or SIBO problems, an apple a day keeps the doctor, keeps you going to the doctor. Mangoes, pears, mm -hmm. artichokes, asparagus. Oh, but I only eat organic. I'm just eating organic. 
Artichokes. I'm just eating organic. Yeah, really? That's me. Well, yes. Yeah, I, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, but I'm all, but I'm eating all, only the, I'm not eating the bad foods, just the good foods. <laughs> well, you can have a problem with the good foods. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to go by your symptoms. You got to go by, mm -hmm. that's why the food diary and the fasting is so important. And that's why it's really simplistic and simple minded to just go with a chart. Are these good foods, these mm -hmm. foods are good and these foods are bad. It, it doesn't serve us. It's simple minded and we deserve better than that. Is it hard to do a food diary and a fast for a couple of, yeah, but we're adults and we got to take care. We're not, we shouldn't be treated like children with little charts of what you can eat and what you can't eat. I get this all the time. What can I eat? What I can't eat? It doesn't go that way. You got to be your own doctor. You want to be your own but health I have authority. A yes, ma'am. And by the way, I potato chips are bad that. for everybody, and donuts are bad <laughs> yes, for everybody. So, sure. you know, there's nobody. Nobody can say. But I can eat donuts. That's one thing that I'm good with is donuts. No, there's certain foods that are definitely bad. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. I understand all that, and I've been doing the low, fat, low FODMAP diet. And my question is, you told us that when we have SIBO, sometimes it's the low uh, HCL, the low That's stomach definitely acid. That's definitely a problem, definitely a factor. causes it? Okay. Uh, so I, didn't, I don't want to say causes it. These are all factors that are involved. The bacterial well, flora we, are responsive. Well, let me just say this real quick. The bacterial flora are responsive to a couple things that involve stomach acid. Number one, the bacterial flora are responsive to the link between stomach acid and bile. If you don't make enough stomach acid, you're not going to be as effective with the bile side of things and the pancreatic enzyme side of things, and that's going to affect the bacteria. Also, if you don't make enough stomach acid, small little proteins can leak into the intestine, and this is, can, be the, can initiate an immune response in the intestine or also even mm -hmm. in the bloodstream if you're dealing with leaky gut eventually. So, yes, apple cider vinegar, noni juice, uh, anything that stimulates digestive juices at the beginnings of your meal can be helpful. Even HCL drops, hydrochloric acid drops that you can get from a, uh, on a prescription from, uh, from, from the pharmacy. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What were you okay. going to say? So what if we were to eat something that's high FODMAP or something like a, like a com complex carbohydrate, like maybe bread or something, and we were to take uh, HCL or some maybe, digestive uh, enzymes? My dear Rhea, the you're going to tell me. I'm, I can't tell you the answer to that. Everybody's, that's my whole point here. I could point you in the right direction. I could tell you what's happening. Mm -hmm. But as far as what's going to work in your body, you're going to tell me. You're the expert over your body. I'm the dummy when it comes to your body. You're the genius. You follow me? And that's how we want to look at yeah. this. We are our own health geniuses, our own health gurus, our own health authorities, our own health professionals, our own health therapists, our own doctors. That's how we want to look at it. I'm just pointing so you in the right direction and giving you places to look. Yes, go ahead. If a digestive enzyme helps us digest high FODMAP foods, then are we to think that it's okay for us to have it? Would, would that not be a trigger food for me? If you're not symptomatic, I I yeah, I, that's the best way to go is go by your symptoms. If you're not symptomatic when you eat a food, you can, you can mm -hmm. for the time being anyway, assume that food is not a problem. Now, if in the long run you have issues, then you've got to work on those. But in, for the time being, if you eat a food and you're okay with it, you don't have rashes, you, these are all the things I'll have. You'll have mm -hmm. gas. You'll have bloating, you'll have discomfort, any uh, digestive discomfort, you'll have diarrhea, maybe constipation, you'll have skin problems, you'll flush, you'll feel, feel fatigued, mm -hmm. you might have brain fog. Any of these are symptomatic of a, of a FODMAPS issue. If you don't have any of those when you eat a food, you can assume for the time being that that's not a problem. Hey, Rhea, I want to get, I got a bunch of people who want to talk here. I'm going to let you okay. go. All right. All right. I appreciate your call. Okay. Good night. Hope Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bad bugs bite. All right, uh, let's go to Andre in California. Good morning, Andre. What's going on? Good morning, Ben. Uh, thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, my you. wife has, uh, uh, well, I, she has multiple sclerosis. She was diagnosed many years ago. Okay. Uh, it's not, it, it, it's not uh, the severe one. But also okay. now lately she, she, she ended up with uh, uh, psoriasis. That's, uh, and she's just itching. It's the same problem. That's, psoriasis is multiple yeah. sclerosis of the skin. Let me say that one more time. Wow. Psoriasis is multiple sclerosis of the skin. Okay? I'm going to say it again. Scl uh, uh, multiple sclerosis is psoriasis of the nerve cell. Do you hear me? Did you hear what I said here? Okay. I'm yeah. just, if you know, understand yeah. what I just said, you know more than your doctor. If you understood what I just said. It's the same condition. Sclerosis 
is a fibrosis and a hardening. It's, a, it's an amping up of the, the connective tissue. It's a destruction and a changing the shape of the tissue that covers the, uh, covers the nerves. It's a distortion. Psoriasis is a distortion of the skin cells. The question is why are the cells distorted? The distortion leads to an immune response. This is autoimmunity, okay? Do you understand what I'm saying here? I'm, just, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to be yeah. like lay person here, not scientific. An autoimmune disease and multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease and psoriasis is an autoimmune disease. It doesn't matter where it happens. They're all the same thing, and it makes me very angry. I'm sorry I get so worked up about this because <laughs> it's so simple, and you've got these specialists who never help anybody. A specialist has never helped anybody get better, and they'll tell you that. When the biochemistry of it is so obvious and so easy to understand that a caveman could do it, or a caveman could understand it. It's a distortion of cells leading to an immune response. You tell that to your doctor and say, isn't that true, doctor? And what, he's going to say, no, that's not true. Of course it's true. It's clear. It's obvious. The question is, what is distorting the cells? And the, dis the distortion in the cells can only come from one place, the blood. Dis the cells are, are communicating and, and reacting and in, uh, immersed in the fluids of the body, and the fluids of the body are the blood, and the stuff that comes out of the blood. It's in the fluid and blood system. It's in the fluid system, which is the blood system, comes from the blood system. How does that happen? How does the blood become toxic? How does the blood become toxic? Well, you can stick things in through your skin, and certainly we know that autoimmunity increases the rates of autoimmunity, a risk factor for autoimmunity is injections. Well, clearly, because you're sticking things in the blood, but for most of us, it's food. Andre, this is so tragic what's happening to your wife. If she's not working with her food, she's missing a major opportunity to feel better, to improve her quality okay. of life, to increase her longevity, to reduce the likelihood of other autoimmune diseases and heart disease and, God forbid, cancers and all these other factors. She's missing these opportunities if she's not leveraging the power of the digestive system and food and her power over the digestive system and our food choices. Do a food diary, eliminate, pro and by the way, estrogen is involved in both, and this is why most MS patients are women. Um, work on dig the digestive system, food, especially fats, get on the nightly essence, use your ultimate selenium, get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, make sure you're on the ultimate EFAs. These are all ways that you can feel better and quickly, your wife can feel better and quickly and reduce her risk of tragedy down the road. And that's how easy it is, people. That's why I do this program. And that's why I call this program The Bright Side. Because it's so easy, it's so simple once you nail this thing down. Andre, I hope I helped you. Uh, we're, we're flat out of time. All right, buddy, thank you. And I'm sorry if we left you on hold. Call back tomorrow, we'll get you first up. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you so much for listening to The Bright Side. Don't forget to check out our Skin health products at truthtreatments.com, all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And really think about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one time $30 fee. If you like what we're talking about here and you want to help spread the word and really save people's lives and improve their quality of life, it's an awesome, awesome business opportunity. Click on the join the team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'll talk to you later, folks. Bye for now.